Total cholesterol blood test, what's optimal? So to address that question, first let's have a look at how levels of total cholesterol change during aging. So what we're looking at here is data for uh, almost 13 million subjects uh, with total cholesterol levels plotted on the y-axis against age at entry on the x-axis. So first, we can see that lower levels of total cholesterol are found in youth. Uh, values around 170 for women and 160 for men are found in 18-year-olds. Well, then cholesterol levels increase during aging. So for women, the, the 170 goes up to about 210 uh, at about 50, with a peak at about 56 years of age, whereas in men it goes from 160 to about 200 uh, at, at around 48 to 50 years of age. And then after those ages, cholesterol levels, total cholesterol levels decline towards the end of life. So what about risk of death for all causes? So uh, using data from the same study, we can see that there's a U-shaped association for the association between total cholesterol levels with all-cause mortality risk. So risk of death for all causes, including cardiovascular disease, cancer, respiratory diseases, all of them combined. Uh, and lowest risk of death for all causes, uh, as highlighted here by the red arrows, is found for total cholesterol levels between 210 to 249 milligrams per deciliter. Now also notice that uh, risk of death increases at levels lower than that, at all levels lower than that, and uh, risk of death for all causes, ACM, increases uh, above 249. So, um, but also interestingly note that uh, having levels less than about 140 in women and about 150 in men, the risk of death for all causes for cholesterol levels lower than that is actually higher than having very high levels of cholesterol, even at up to 300. So uh, that data just illustrates the, um, that lower cholesterol is potentially not better than having higher cholesterol. So based on this data, should 210 to 249 uh, be considered optimal? Well, it's important to note that in this study, there was a very wide age distribution that included a ton of subjects. And I've highlighted the age distribution here, and you can see that there are millions of subjects for every uh, uh, age distribution, with the exception of the older ages above 65. Uh, but even over from 65 to 99, it's about 1.3 million subjects. So that's still a ton of data. So is 210 to 249 associated with the lowest all-cause mortality, mortality risk for all of the age groups. Let's have a look at the data. So I'm going to show the data starting from the oldest age groups and work, work backwards. So first, um, 210 to 249 is associated with the lowest risk of death for all causes in uh, people, uh, men and women, 75 to 99 years of age. Now, notice here that this curve is more flat than the curves we're about to see. But again, also notice that uh, lower values, in this case, uh, below around 140, seem to have a higher risk of death for all causes compared with the very high levels, you know, 280, 300, et cetera. All right, what about younger than 75? So uh, yeah, similar, similar trend. Again, 210 to 249 is, uh, was associated with the lowest risk for both men and women. And again, increasing uh, risk of death for all causes with lower and also higher levels of uh, total cholesterol. What about uh, in adults younger than 65 years? Uh, again, similar trend, 210 to 249 optimal. Um, lower cholesterol seems to have a higher risk than higher cholesterol. Nonetheless, higher risk at, at both low and high levels of total cholesterol relative to 210 to 249. And again, 45 to 54, similar trend. Now, where the data gets uh, a little more interesting is in the younger age group. So 35 to 44 years. Let's start there. So the uh, 210 to 249 that was optimal at the older age groups uh, is not optimal at uh, 35 to 44 year age group. Uh, so uh, for the women, 180 to 220 was associated with the lowest risk of death for all causes. Uh, and then uh, at the lower levels of cholesterol, risk increases only significantly uh, for levels that are uh, 130 to 139 and less than 120. Uh, and risk also increases for women at higher levels, uh, greater than 280. But also notice in this case at the younger age group that um, having lower levels of cholesterol, less than 140 in this case, doesn't seem to have impart, impart a higher risk compared with greater than 280. So that's one way that the younger data diverges from the older data. Well, what about the data for men in this age group? So in this case, uh, 210 to 229 was associated with lowest risk of death for all causes. And then uh, risk increases for men at total cholesterol uh, less than 210, and then uh, between 230 and 239 and greater than 250.
All right, how about in the youngest age group? So um, first, lowest risk, starting with the women, the data for the women, the lowest risk of death uh, for all causes was 160 to 200. And then note that there was no uh, significant increase in uh, all-cause mortality risk for values lower than 160. So lower cholesterol in women 18 to 34 years, lower than 160, was not associated with an increased risk of death for all causes, which is in contrast to all of the other data uh, at the, in the other age groups. And once again, uh, very high values, uh, in this case greater than 280, were associated with higher risk uh, for the 18 to 34-year-old women. What about the data for the men? Uh, so in this case, 180 to 220 is associated with lowest risk of death for all causes, and then uh, risk increases uh, at total cholesterol levels less than 150, and then also uh, greater than 260. So for the men, in this case, a U-shaped curve, albeit with uh, values that are uh, different from the older age groups. And then uh, all the data I showed uh, in the past few slides uh, was a lot. So to simplify it, I put it into table form. So wherever your age group uh, is, you can have an easy and quick look at the data. And that's all I've got. Uh, you can find me lots of places online. Have a great day.